Hello and welcome. My name is Donna and I'm one of the educators with Bywater Solutions. Today I am going to show you how to set up a library card patron category that will allow your users to be able to access e-resources immediately without having to come into the library and get a library card. This is something that we've seen a lot of libraries asking for recently because we have more and more online resources that are available and we want to make sure that our customers have access to them immediately. There's just a few simple steps to go through. So one of the first is that you're going to be needing to set up a couple of your system preferences. In your system preferences, there is an auto member num that is going to need to be set up and turned on. Now, don't be worried about having this interfere with the cards that you're registering when people are in the library. We'll go ahead and show you how to work around that. And it doesn't auto-populate it to the in-person registration, so your staff will have no problems being able to access that. And then you just need to make sure that under the borrower mandatory field that the auto, the card number, excuse me, is not required. Um, otherwise, it's going to cause some issues with that. So those will, those will be two changes that you need to make. The other thing you will need to do is set up a patron category and optionally set up the, another branch. So in your administration section, I have went ahead and set up a new patron category for the online registrations. And this one is called online and it is online registration. And you can set this to different enrollment periods, you can set it to specific ages, things like that, but you can go ahead and set that up however you need to. This just makes it a little bit easier to separate out those online registrations from other patron categories. The other thing that you might wanna do is set up a separate library branch. Again, this just goes ahead and makes it a lot easier for reporting purposes and to see what else is happening with all of this, that you can set them to only be able to use the online resources only branch, which is called ebook in, in our system. I've made that as the code. And that helps you go ahead again and narrow it down as to who would be able to use these library cards. So once you've set those two up, you're going to want to head over to your system preferences and under your OPAC preferences, you have your self-registration sections. You want to make sure that you, first of all, have your required columns in the self-registration section. And so, for instance, in here, I've chosen first name and last name and things like that. Then there's also the unwanted fields. And these would be things that you don't want your patients to have to fill out when they're doing the online registration. I've included an entire list of all of these fields in the accompanying blog post to this, just to make it a little bit easier for you to copy and paste and figure out which ones you want to have in there. The next step is set it to the category code that you want to be able to use. And again, I've used online. And then I went ahead and chose the library that they'd be able to register with. So ebook is the only library they're able to use the online registration with. Then you do have the option to go ahead and display and pre-fill the password. This is also really nice if you turn on the option to automatically email users with their information. Again, that's a system preference and that's just a nice thing to be able to send to that patron. The other one that you might want to change is the additional instructions. So you have a box here that you can just go ahead and add some additional information. So for instance, I can say something, this card is only for online resources. Please visit your nearest library. or a full privilege card, or however you want to phrase it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and save my OPAC preferences. So the only other thing to be aware of is with your auto member num. What this is going to do is automatically assign a number to the patron, so they'll get their library card number on the spot. What you need to be able to do, though, is figure out what your highest library card number is and then go ahead and set this number to something much higher. For example, most of our library cards start with 2459 and, and continue for 14 digits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user with a significantly higher library card number so that when patrons do this automatic registration, it'll go ahead and assign them a card number that is not within my printed card number realms. 
Okay, so to do that, I'm going over to my patrons. I am going to add a new patron in the online registration category. And I'm going to call this one first online registration. Okay. And then I recall which category, what number is. I went ahead and found out what my highest library card number is. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in here that actually starts with nine. Um, so again, significantly higher numbers. And then 13 zeros, because again, we have 14 digit library cards. I'm going to go ahead and choose my online resources only as my library. Okay, everything else is good to go. Since this is just a, a placeholder in my card numbering system, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so now I've got that information in there. We've got this all set to go, and that's all there is to it. You've obviously turned on your self-registration too. Again, that is the system preference that you want to make sure that is available, um, which is allow patrons to register and modify. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to our OPAC, um, just as if we have a patron who has come in and wants to have a library card or has found our site online and wants to have a library card. So we go ahead and click on the register here button. Okay, you'll see that it automatically defaults to the online resources only library, and that is the only library that they can choose. We have some required information. We do require the date of birth here. Okay. And then again, address. Okay, phone number, and it does require an email address. And then we do have our verification that we do need to fill in here. Okay, and then all the patron does is submit. And you will see that we've got that information there. So Koha has automatically generated a generic password and it has been pre-populated. So the patron can go ahead and log in and change that right now. And then you can see that they've got their card number. So it did populate to that next highest card number that was in my system. And then you can see this is the note that I added that this is for online resources only. So a fairly straightforward process. Of course, we can go ahead and help you set this up even further as far as creating reports that will send you a list either daily or weekly of all the patrons that have registered that you could go ahead and reach out to them if you want to or verify their accounts to make sure the information is correct and they are in your service area, things like that. So there's a lot of extra things that we can do too, but that's the fundamentals of setting up the online only library card. So I hope that you find this useful and as always, Please let us know if there's anything that we can assist you with. Thank you and have a good day.